Okay, we're now on 2.3. So it says Stephanie landed safely at Cape Town International Airport at 23.06. Below is a map of the airport drawn on to a scale of 1 to 5,000. Remember, that means, right, that every one unit on here, we don't know exactly what that unit is at this point in time. They'll probably give us a little bit more um, detail on that. It equals 5,000 units in reality, right? Remember that a map is always a smaller representation of reality because it helps us navigate, okay? There'd be no help, be no help at all if it was the same size as reality because then we wouldn't be able to navigate, okay? Very importantly, right, we must see always where north, west, east, and south face, right? So north is facing kind of like a weird left, right? So they're probably going to ask us to do some sort of navigation um, um, with the compass, but let's not speculate. Let's rather just jump in, okay? You all can't see anything that's on that. hope they don't ask us anything on the key because it's very small. Okay, so what is the general direction from P5 to domestic arrivals? Okay, so here's P5. Let me just get a little um, highlighter. Okay, so there's P5. And let's see, where is domestic arrivals? Do, do, do. There's domestic arrivals over there. Okay, so it's kind of like in that direction there. Okay, just so that you can see where it is. Okay, so we are standing, when it says from, right, that's where we're standing, right? So I'm standing at P5, and I'm looking over to domestic arrivals. So what direction am I looking at? It kind of looks like it's east, right? Do you see that? In the same direction as east based on our compass. So I'm going to say east, okay? Perfect. So let's now go on to the next question. It says, the length of the building, P1, Okay, let's find P1. Okay, so P1's over there, right? Is 40, 54 millimeters, okay? Using the given scale, determine the actual length of the building in meters, okay? So we know, right, that one, I think it's one millimeter in this instance, right? So one millimeter, because they've given us the distance millimeters. So one millimeter equals 5,000 millimeters in reality, Okay, but now we have 54, millile 54 millimeters, right? So what we've done is we have to get 1 to be 54, so we times that by 54. But then when it comes to a ratio, and I keep saying this, right, what you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. So we've times 1 by 54 to get 54, but here we're going to times 5,000 by 54, Okay, but that's still going to be a measure, right, in millimeters, right? So we haven't answered the question that they've asked us to answer, right? Because they said the building in meters. So now we have to go from millimeters to meters. So I always do this in two steps just to remind myself. 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. 100 centimeters equals one meter. So... I'm going to go from, I just want to make sure you can see what I'm writing. Okay, cool. From this many millimeters to centimeters, I'm going to divide by 10. Right, so I'm going to take that, divide it by 10, and that's going to give me my number of centimeters. Right, but they didn't ask us for our answer in centimeters, did they? They asked us for our answer in meters. So to go from centimeters to meters, we divide by a hundred, okay? So we now get 270 meters, okay? Remember, when we're moving from a smaller measure to a larger measure, we always divide, okay? Because there will always be fewer meters than there are millimeters or centimeters because meters is a larger form of measurement, okay? So that's your final answer there. I hope that was helpful. We are now moving on to question three.